strangers. I'm landing back with another watch video so soon. As you can see, I'm home. This is my desk. I'm still using that tripod I bought the other day that you saw me use in the last video. I think I like this angle. We're gonna test it out. We're gonna talk about a really cool watch today. It's another digital watch, but first, a wrist check. And this is not the watch I'm gonna to review today. This is a very cool watch. Let me take it off and show you exactly what it is. It's a, it's a voice memo. Um, I'm going to play you a little voice memo and see if it comes through. This is the Casio DBB300 with a 30 second data bank voice memo. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's uh, this is called the Casio DBV300 with a 30 second data bank for taking 30 second voice memos. And you can uh, record for a few seconds, stop recording, record some more, stop recording, play. If you hold this button, it'll clear the recording. And it's it's pretty cool. This was very this is very cheap off of eBay. And I saw it and I just had to have it. Because it looks really cool. And it's not big. You can definitely tell it's used. It's a big old speaker back there. It's a pretty cool watch. I like to wear it. I do wear it um, every once in a while. And I'm not going to do a full review video on it. Because there's just not much to talk about other than... It re records your voice. It's just pretty freaking cool. Anyway, enough about that. Let's talk about another watch. And this is what we're going to talk about today. This is the Citizen and a Digitemp, specifically the Citizen 8988. It is a reissue, a remake of the original uh, 8900 series developed by Citizen in the 1980s. And the reason they remade it is because the original watch, which looked almost exactly like this one, um, except it had silver subdials. The calendar only went up to 2019, so they reissued it. Same exact watch, same chipset, everything, except it had an updated software inside there. So the calendar now goes from 1999 to 2099, and that means this watch was made after 1999. Um, this watch was bought new by a friend of mine in the early 2000s. He wore it for a little while, let the battery die, and didn't really touch it after that, and I traded him now, one of my quartz chronographs for it, and uh, I really like it. It's a very cool little watch. Let me throw it on the wrist. And there we go. You can see it definitely has some wrist presence because these end links don't really fold that much. So it's not much of a tool watch. It is very tooly, but I wouldn't call it a tool watch. It's a very nice watch. It's not a tool watch. I did some reading up on Citizen as far as their history goes and the history of this watch. Uh, like I said earlier, the first iteration of the 8900 series was developed in the 80s, in 1980 to be exact, and the first Anna Digi was the 8980 in 1981, was when the first one was made. And like I said, they reissued it in the early 2000s with the updated calendar. This was back when the quartz crisis or quartz revolution was going on. A lot of research and development was going into dual time watches, which were per apparently pretty hit back then when this was uh, first created. Uh, Citizen itself, the brand, they date back to 1918. And what happened was Swiss and Japanese investors uh, took over the Shokosha Watch Research Institute in Japan in 1930. And they started, and they bought a few manufacturing plants as well to try to sell affordable wrist watches. So most of the watches they made in the early uh, beginning of their company were, you know, they borrowed technology from the Swiss and mixed it with the Japanese. I think that's pretty cool. Nice little history. I learned a few interesting, about, interesting things about Citizen. In 2008, they bought Bulova. And Bulova is a historically American company. And they're the ones who really led the way uh, in the early quartz revolution uh, with their tuning fork and, and things like that. Um, in 2016, Citizen actually bought Frédéric Constant. I think that's how you say it. But it's that really nice uh, Swiss watch manufacturer. And of course, if you've ever done any watch modifications or, you know, looked into automatic watches, quartz watches at all, you've probably heard of the Miyota movement, and that's actually made by Citizen. So uh, these people have a big impact in the horological community. They're one of the biggest watch manufacturers ever. This watch specifically, um, as you can see, it's the Anna Digitemp, and it's got analog display, digital display, and it measures the temperature. And we get that in calendar. So it measures the temperature and it's measuring in Fahrenheit right now and it says it's 71 degrees. It's 71 degrees because this watch was sitting on my desk for a while and the desk is a little colder than what it actually is in here. 
and it's not a very accurate temperature display if you're wearing it on your wrist it's going to tell you your superficial body temperature so the temperature of the skin of your arm under the watch if you want to give this an accurate reading of the room temperature you want to leave it alone on a desk somewhere for about 20 minutes that's what they say what else does this thing do one of the things that's quirky about this watch is it's not a conventional digital watch as far as what the buttons do it's very it's very different it's very complicated um, when you set the time the analog time up here doesn't set automatically so you could theoretically have three different time zones because this is the normal time we have the date right there so it's Saturday the 8th this is a stopwatch and this is the dual time so I have them set the same I have all three displays set the same but you could the theoretically have three different time zones, which is pretty cool. So we have, start from the beginning. We got time, we got the date and the temperature. We got an alarm function. We have a dual time and a stopwatch. That second hand up here does a lot of different things. In this setting, the second hand up here gives you the running seconds of the, your current time. You press it again, yeah. And it'll tell you what the alarm is set for. I don't have an alarm set right now, so it's just at zero hours. It'll tell you the dual time hours. So my dual time is set to the same time as this, so this second hand is going to point to whatever hour the dual time is set to. And it goes back to there. And when you go, well, that's the light. And when you go to the stopwatch, this will give you the running seconds for the stopwatch. Pretty cool stuff. Um, you use these two buttons here to adjust things. And I'm not going to get into it because it's complicated and it takes a second. And it's just, I mean, these two buttons act like a normal digital watch when you're setting the time. What's cool about this, of course, is that it's got a temperature gauge. And there's a little crystal inside there that measures, you know, temperature, thermoresistor. And a lot of people think this is a speaker for the alarm. And it's not. The, uh, the temperature sensor is actually under there. From what I could tell, looking at diagrams of the tip set. If I'm wrong, somebody tell me. I'm sure there's a lot more people out there who know more about this watch than I do. But I really, I really like this watch. And it has loom. It actually has loom. It has loom on all three hands. And it also has loom at the 12, 3, 6, and 9 indices on the two dials. Let me see if I can't get that going for you. I'm just doing a loom shot right now. All right, let's see if we can see anything. There you go. It doesn't last very long, and when you're in a dark room, it's very hard to see. Uh, my computer monitor is over there, kind of illuminating the way for us. It also has a backlight function. It's kind of dinky, but it's good enough to tell the time if you really need to. And that's going to be a lot more effective than looking at the loom, for sure. All right, so let's knock out some dimensions. It's a very well-wearing watch. Let's see what we're actually working with. About 31 millimeters. The case is 35 and a half ish. Eight and a half millimeters thick. But like I said, when you're wearing it, it has a little bit more presence because these lugs don't really curve. And that's okay. The strap is really cool. It's very, very slick, very sleek. It does curve a lot, except for right there at the lugs because they're kind of sort of integrated. They're welded to that plate. Didn't get a lot of flex right there. And it does bite the hair a little bit. I really only notice it biting my hair when I cross my arms. You know, it bites my other hair. The clasp on here is very cool for this style. It's got that normal right there. Normal little steel bracelet clasp, but it also has a lock right here. It's very effective. I Every time I go to take this watch off, I try to yank it without undoing this lock. And... I have to stop because it won't let me. Very secure. But yeah, so that's the Citizen and a Digitemp. Reissue, of course, from the early 2000s. It looks exactly like the old one. Pretty much the exact same watch, except like I said, it has that updated calendar. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. If uh, this is something you go for, I am absolutely in love with this watch. Also, let me know what you think about this camera setup. If you prefer this over the overhead setup, I think I like this better. I do have to reach for it a little more, but this camera's more stable. I don't really have to worry about it jiggling around as much. Make sure you uh, like and subscribe. I think, uh, I think that's important for everybody. Uh, I don't know if you know this. I've mentioned it before, but I don't make money off these videos. I don't ever plan to. 
I do this for me because I think it's fun. I really like watches, and uh, I don't ever plan on monetizing them because I don't want to deal with copyright stuff. But anyway, thank you for watching, and hey, wear what you like.